Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Family Weekend. Great to see you all here. My name is Tino Del Merced, and I am a fourth year medical student here. This event is called Great Expectations, the Student Experience Panel. Before we get started with our Q&A, I have a few housekeeping notes. First, we are going to take questions from our live audience present here today. Hello to our virtual audience at home, in the car, at work, wherever you're joining us. We unfortunately can't take any questions from the virtual audience, but hopefully we can get to meet you or answer your questions at another time. This year, we are particularly excited to welcome you to campus since we are celebrating 50 years of medicine at Brown. We have a wonderful weekend of events planned. We have another panel directly following this one, and we have water fire tomorrow night. I hope you'll be able to join us. This event is going to be recorded, and the purpose of this panel is to have current students answer your questions about Brown. We are here to give you this student perspective, and we will do our best to answer as many questions as possible in the time allotted. If you have a question, please use one of the microphones on either side of the room to ask us. Joining me is a fantastic group of panelists. We have folks from all years of medical school, as well as an undergraduate senior who's matriculating into the medical school next year. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself, and then Naila and the rest of the panelists can introduce themselves. Again, my name is Tino. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I was a part of the program in liberal medical education. And as an undergrad, I took to heart the liberal aspect of my education and majored in Latin in college. I started med school here in 2018, and I took what I'm calling a year of enrichment between my third and fourth years to do research at the Memory Disorders Clinic and work in medical media for Stat News and other health and medical news outlets. This year, I'm applying to residency, and I'm intending to match into neurology. And alongside my panelists, I'm excited to get to speak with you all today and hopefully meet some of you this weekend. So for our panelists, you can go ahead and say your name, your year of anticipated graduation, areas of medicine that you're interested in, and any fun extracurriculars or any research projects that you're a part of. Hello everyone, my name is Naila Tucker. I'm a third year medical student here at Warren Alpert. I am also an EIP student. We are students that come from um, Tulu College. I'm from Dallas, Texas. My areas of interest are OB-GYN, particularly maternal fetal medicine. Research that I'm involved in right now is I'm looking at geospatial characteristics and its impact on maternal morbidities. And I am working to see how that impacts communities that we are involved in. My name is Ben Stone. I'm a second year med school student. I'm from Maine. I went to Bowdoin College, class of 2017. And then I completed a master's program here at Brown. Um, I'm interested in a wide range of things, trying to figure out which area of medicine is most interesting to me right now, but I like surgery and some aspects of internal medicine as well. I lead a trauma elective, um, and I also teach sex ed to middle school students. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm also doing a scholarly concentration in translational research in medicine. So I do some wet lab research locally, and I really enjoy my time here. Hi everyone, my name is Rishi. I am a first year. I graduated from Brown last, uh, last May. So I was part of the PLB program. I, in undergrad, I studied CS and Econ. I'm not exactly sure what I want to specialize in, but I'm excited to explore. And I play a lot of IM sports with other med students here. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Kiana Zahiri and I'm a current senior Plymouth student starting med school next year. And I'm studying health and human biology, cognitive neuroscience. And within the Plymouth, I run the first generation underrepresented in medicine committee. 
and I'm interested in cardiac surgery, and that's what most of my research is focused on, as well as cardiac tissue engineering. Great, thank you guys for your introductions. Um, and I'll go ahead and ask the first question, and people can go ahead and line up at, at the microphones to ask theirs. Um, so just to get us started, there are more than 100 medical schools across the country and thousands of universities around the world. What drew you to this place, Brown University? I can start too, if, if that's what people want. Um, and I'll allow the panelists to jump in. Um, so to me, Brown is a place of collaboration across disciplines. Um, so for example, in the medical school, we have interdisciplinary days where we invite nursing students and pharmacy students to work with us to um, get to practice interdisciplinary patient care. And in other graduate schools at Brown, like the School of Public Health, um, they hire a lot of researchers in epidemiology and the usual public health areas, but they also have people who specialize in medical misinformation, people who spe specialize in noise pollution. Um, so here at Brown, we have an understanding of how important it is to tackle all as aspects and dimensions of patient care. Um, and parallel to that, um, as an undergraduate, I had different academic interests outside of medicine, and the PLME program was what really drew me to Brown, which allowed me to explore my interests in Latin, classics, and archaeology, in addition to taking classes in the biological sciences and pre-med courses. So um, Brown has been a wonderful place to pursue all my different academic interests. I think one unique aspect of going to Brown is that this medical school is the only medical school in Rhode Island and Providence. Um, and so in terms of reaching out to physicians and researchers to shadow and engage in all aspects of research, clinical, wet lab research, um, all the faculty are just, they're excited to have you. I think that's something they don't necessarily get in different cities where you might have more medical schools and more medical school students who are all trying to, uh, you know, reach out and email the same, uh, same individuals. So I've had a, a very good experience when it comes to reaching out um, for advice and, and for research. And I, I think that's a, a, a great aspect of being here at Brown. Um. My road to getting to Brown as an EIP student is a little different from some of the Pliny's. I had the opportunity from Tougaloo College to apply to medical schools such as, such as Buffalo and Boston, and I was accepted to all of them. So it was the option to look what was important to me when I was applying to medical school. And what I found different that Brown had was the support. Um, I was able to email questions about how they could support me even after my interview. Uh, when I came in for my interview, they let us know we can email at all times. They have options of when um, we need help, tutoring services, and just knowing to have that support sometimes can really set it apart from different medical schools. And I think that the road in medical school is different and um, you're going to need help at some point. And when you look at medical schools, you need to make sure they have that type of support that can take you to the next level and they're willing to support you in any way. And that was really my decision to come to Brown because I wanted the support, especially being far away from home, not just academically, but mentally and uh, financially and emotionally as well. I had a similar path through Brown as Tino because I was also in the PLME program. Uh, the biggest thing that drew me was the opportunity to study things outside of medicine before I started med school and then hopefully bring those skills over into medicine in my own unique way. Um, one thing I'd add is that uh, that ability to really explore varied interests also carries over into the med school. They're really supportive of uh, whatever you're passionate and interested in, like helping you get connected to resources um, that'll help you like explore those passions and, and uh, work on them at a really high level. Uh, I think for me, it was also very similar to Tino and Rishi. I really like 
the open curriculum of Brown, I think, is something that's very valuable, the flexibility that it allows for you to truly explore anything that you're interested in, um, as well as the PLEMI program, I think, was a huge factor in me selecting Brown, since there's just so many opportunities for research, networking, making connections, and meeting people that you're going to be with for the next eight years. Okay. And um, folks can feel free to ask any questions, but I can ask another question as well. Um, for, for any of you involved in research, could you talk a little bit about how you got involved in those opportunities? I keep on leaning forward because I'm, I think I'm too tall. <laughs> I'll try to sit back instead. Uh, so I think, you know, there are different buckets of, of research. There's wet lab research, there's clinical research. Uh, the majority of students definitely engage in clinical research unless they're part of uh, the MD, MD PhD program. Um, but I, I, you know, I think there are a variety of opportunities that students can engage in. So when I came here to Brown, um, I had a little bit of wet lab research from undergrad and I wanted to re-explore that. So I reached out to um, a group called the, the Weiss uh, Center for Orthopedic Trauma and they do a lot of cool research with microbes. And um, so for the past year I've been pipetting, which is awesome. <laughs> and um, in terms of clinical research, different departments either have regular clinical research meetings. Uh, for example, the spine department has a, a bi-weekly meeting and other groups have, have more organized meetings. And then there are, you know, there are tons of residents here and part of residency involves com completing some research projects. And so residents are always reaching out for help from the med school students. So I think, you know, I encourage uh, anybody who's going into med school to think about what they might be interested in and to just reach out to anybody um, who they find online who's local and if you can send them an email and say hey I'm interested in doing this kind of research um, maybe that person is going to have a project specifically that um, that's available for a student but they can put you in touch with a resident who might have a project and so I think people become pretty connected to the, the different departments here through just just sending emails um, yeah. So how he explained to reach out is exactly how I started doing research. Um, we have something here at Brown, I think it's called Vivo at Brown, and it's a list of all the physicians and researchers here. Um, and it talks about a little bit of their research and the publications that they have done. So I really, I scrolled down the list and I was like, oh, I like that. And then I, I sent um, numerous emails and that's how I got connected with um, my mentor, Dr. Erica Warner and Dr. Alina Aviella. And I told them what I was interested in and how I wanted to do it. And that just got the ball rolling. And I think with having that resource and having that opportunity to just send an email and say, I'm this I'm a first year, I'm a second year, these are my passions, this is my interest. Um, is there a way that we can set up a meeting? And again, you just have to make those connections and reach out. And even if that didn't work, there were people here at the school that they could get me in contact with their colleagues or with their residents. And that has allowed me to get on even more projects. Yeah, I can talk about it from the undergraduate side. Um, there are undergrad parents and undergrads in here. Seeing a few nods. Okay, yeah. So uh, it's pretty similar. Uh, in the when I was an undergrad, it was looking at Vivo or Brown, seeing what interesting projects there were, what I was interested in, and the really cool thing was even as a first year, there were some really excited. Um, researchers that were excited to have me join and it's just demonstrating interest and I think the coolest part about that was one when I told some of my friends about this that went to other schools they were like shocked that uh, researchers were excited to have first years who didn't know much on their project 
And I think the other thing was they were very encouraging of like asking questions and taking time out of their busy schedules to really teach you like that is something that uh, it was clear that they enjoyed doing, uh, which made the research project process a lot more enjoyable and, and less frightening here. I think that there's tons of opportunities for research at Brown as early as you're interested. And cold emailing is definitely a great strategy. And also on the undergraduate level, there's the UTRA program that the university runs. And Playme also has the SRA or Summer Research Assistantship program, where they provide a stipend for students to do research over the summer. And there's a group of labs or PIs or even physicians that are doing research. And they have a list of projects that they have. And students can just apply to whatever they're interested in, speak to the lab. and. That's also a really easy way to get involved, especially as a Playmate student or if you're a Brown undergrad. Uh, one more thing I want to add about research at Brown. Um, there's also the opportunity of Leadership Alliance. The reason I know about that is because my sister did Leadership Alliance here at Brown, and she was able to work on a team in, I believe, in cardiothoracic and she was able to be published before she graduated and when she started here in the fall as a first year med student at Brown she was able to continue her research so when you make those connections it will be good to follow them up throughout in order to have recommendations for later on so you can also consider leadership alliance and uh, similar to what Kiana was saying earlier between the first and second year of medical school, we have protected time, basically two months during the summer, where we can kind of pursue whatever extracurricular activity we do. And a lot of folks do research during that time. Um, and usually around that time, there's also this spreadsheet that goes out to the whole class, where there's a list of opportunities for um, people to pursue research with, with mentors in Rhode Island. And there's a, equivalently a summer fellowship or a summer stipend for, for research projects. Um, no one else has another question. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, for those of you incurring debt for this journey, can you talk about what counseling you get about how much debt you're incurring and how it's influenced your decisions when you leave here? We do receive counseling. <laughs> we do. Uh, the um, financial aid office here is is great, and um, they do their best to be in touch with students at the beginning of the journey, and they check in with you periodically as well. So uh, I, I would say there's as much transparency as there there can be between the office of, of financial aid and students in regards to how much debt they're taking on and what the expectations will be. Um, I can't speak to the um, perspective of a, of a fourth year, but before graduating, I know there is another formal meeting that's had to discuss strategies um, for after you graduate. I've worked closely with financial aid because uh, my concern with financial aid, especially being away from home, was budgeting. So I was able to have a sit down with them and they were able to tell me how much I'm getting what, what can go towards um, schools, such as UWorld, books and things of that nature, and also how to budget it with living in Providence. Um, when I came, it was a transition as far as apartment living, how much cost of living was. So they were able to coach me and talk me through that process. It um, was able to give me advice on what the next couple of years was going to be like. Um, I heard you mention the MD PhD program. What's the difference in the curriculum between just a straight MD and someone going for the MD PhD? Number one. And number two, for people who might be interested in the MD PhD, taking a gap year doing additional research, is that helpful? Uh, we don't actually have any MD PhDs on this panel, so that's a really good question. I do know they get some other medical scientist um, curriculum for pursuing research. Um, I'm not quite sure if pursuing a gap year is um, helpful for that. I know that if a student is 
in the undergraduate currently, like in the PLME program, they can start reaching out to potential PIs, um, start reaching out to the deans here in the medical school early on to see if they'd like to be a part of that program. I'm not sure if any of you have any close friends who are in that program or no more. Um, yeah, so I, I'm a traditional applicant and um, I'm not a, an MD PhD student, but the, the way that it works is you complete your first two years of the preclinical curriculum. And during your first two years, you also uh, sort of interview with different labs on, on campus. Not, not really interview, but you, you, know, you meet with the PIs and see who you get along with and if they have different projects that you might be interested in pursuing. And then at the end of your second year, you embark on, I think, what's either a four or five year research journey. And so you complete your PhD, and at the end of that, then you return and you complete your third and fourth year. In terms of the competitiveness of getting into an MD PhD program um, and you know, comparing that to regular med school um, admissions, both hyper competitive, the MD PhD route is even more competitive. If you look at MCAT scores and average GPA, um, I think the big thing with an MD PhD program is schools want to see a true dedication to research. And that research is usually in the form of wet lab research. So, did you do wet lab research when you were an undergrad student? If your school offered the opportunity to do an honors project in basic science research, did you do that? Did you, you know, did you publish a, a thesis? Um, if you don't have that much research experience as an undergraduate student, then uh, I think taking time off after undergrad to demonstrate that interest in basic science research is crucial. I'd like to hear from the, the panel kind of how you progress through the program. So maybe starting with Kiana, kind of explain what you're experiencing this year and then maybe what you wish you'd have known going into this year and then just move up and progress through. So thank you. So I'm a senior now in the Pliny program and what I'm experiencing this year um, a lot. Um, I think that one of the main things is the senior thesis is a big thing that's coming up for all seniors. If you're pursuing an honors thesis, so doing research for that, tons of paperwork for that, putting that together. Um, and then also the senior year in Pliny, there's the Pliny Senior Seminar where the entire Pliny class comes together and each week we have different physicians that come and introduce us to different specialties and we have small group discussions about different topics in medicine. Um, and I think those are the main things in the senior year of Pliny. Um, we will be having some sessions later on, I think, that are more us getting to meet some current medical students and get more information about the transition to medical school. And we're also getting some information about different programs that we can pursue in medical school, like the MD-PhD program was one. There's the Sciences of Medicine program, the MPH program as well. So a lot of... Um, educational things kind of preparing us for next year. So in my first year, I took a lot of the traditional uh, pre-med courses, some of the requirements for the PLME course. And then after that, I tried to do as little um, medical related things as possible, just because I knew I'd be committing to that afterwards. So I kind of took a pretty untraditional route of like CS and econ and engineering, just classes I thought would be interesting and fun. And looking back on it now, from like a, just having been in med school for like the first three months so far, I like I don't re regret that decision. In fact, like I wish I had done, like started that even sooner. Um, just because you only get those four number of years um, to really get to explore like those passions outside of medicine um, in, a, in a, like a Brown type setting. Um, and the transition to med school has been uh, like difficult because med school is harder than undergrad was for me. But uh, the med school does a really good job of providing a lot of, like offering a lot of resources. And especially in the small group settings, uh, I was really impressed with how the small group mentors, um, sometimes they'll be physicians, sometimes they'll be social workers in the community, uh, 
you can tell they really have your back, uh, especially like in like emails about like, let's say you're writing uh, a case write up or you're writing a, a, a note about how med school has been so far. Uh, I was really impressed in the, you could tell they really read and thought about the feedback they were giving you because it was very helpful in providing specific resources, but also just being like, yeah, if you ever want to talk after this, we'd be happy to meet in person for coffee, just us too. And so that's been really helpful. Or was the question about our journey to med school or about what we're doing? Well, currently? yeah, I, I guess I probably wasn't real clear. More of what you're doing in your current year as far as, you know, are you in class all the time? Are you doing research? Are you doing clinicals? Are you off campus most of the time? Stuff like that. So I, I wasn't really clear. And then kind of what you wish you'd have known coming into the year you're currently in. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so as a second year student, we continue the preclinical coursework. So first year and second year, first year and a half of second year, you complete these, these blocks of basic science information. So in the first year, it's more of biochemistry and learning histology and pathophysiology. And as you move into the end of first year and into your second year, you really learn more about the, the different body systems. So thus far as a second year student, we've had cardiology and pulmonology, and we're in the middle of renal right now. And so as a second year student, we'll continue these blocks up until the end of February, and then we will have an eight week dedicated period to study for the first big board exam called step one. So as a, yeah, as a second year student, if you look at my day, we have lecture in the morning still, um, for whatever particular block we're in. So we have lectures on, on renal stuff right now. And um, we also have dedicated time every Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday um, to pursue different research pursuits. So uh, there are some students who do scholarly concentrations, which we can talk about more uh, later on. Um, and then you have students who just pursue independent research so the, the school gives you protected time on certain days to, to, to do research as well. And um, yeah, in the first year and the second year, you're also learning how to be a doctor and talk to patients. And so we have do a doctoring program here. And during first and second year, you learn a lot about how to perform physical exams and conduct medical interviews. And you also go into the hospital and, and shadow and they community mentor who you're assigned to and you do that um, almost every week so yeah it's uh it's integrated it's comprehensive okay so i am a third year medical student uh, at that point we are clinical students um, so we rotate around to different specialties i just finished my surgery specialty um, and that kind of day-to-day -day looks like occasionally we would round at 5.30 in the morning. And then um, <laughs> afterwards we would have, we have, luckily at Brown you have a hard stop at four. So that's, I feel like that's a good built-in part. So from four to five we have class. And then after that, um, after five, I kind of prepare for my shelf um, or rest. Um, kind of depends on the day. Um, and as a clinical student, we are more involved with patient care. We write notes, we go pre-round on our patients. Um, sometimes we're able to put in orders, which feels good. Um, we start to feel a, more part of the team as a clinical student. The day-to-day -day changes a lot as a clinical student. We um, kind of have to follow our preceptor around and their schedule is our schedule. So that's a little different from first and second year. Um, what I wish I would have known going in is that it's okay to rest. You're so busy, you have notes, you, you wanna be a part of the team and you feel like you don't have time for yourself. And um, you feel bad when you're like, oh, I need to like sit down for two minutes, but it's okay, we have to, um, prioritize self-care and I think that in clinical years in that transition it gets a, a little harder because now it's like okay 
I'm closer to where I want to be, but I need to also prioritize myself. So I wish um, I would be a little kinder to myself and like listen to my friends when they tell me to sleep. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And I'm in my fourth year, um, so the first like four or five months, I would say, of fourth year are pretty busy. Um, so things that students are doing in that time, they're taking step two, um, and they're doing their sub-internships or their acting intern rotations. And essentially, you basically get to act like a resident um, for about a month um, in the rotation, in the specialty that you want to be applying into. Um, so people do between like one or maybe even up to like three or more of those rotations. You can do them here at your home institution at Brown. That's where we all have to do at least one. But you can also do an away rotation, like in a different state, different city, depending on where you want to end up for residency. So I did that um, in California. And um, after you do all of those sub-internships, you start doing some of the other electives. So you can kind of build your own schedule for the rest of the year. Um, and very often those electives are related to the specialty that you want to go into. Um, those aren't as intense as the sub-internships. And by the end of September, you're applying to residency and submitting um, to ERAS your applications to all the different residency programs. So I'm on the other side of all of those things, which is great. You're catching me at a really great time. I'm getting interview <laughs> invitations and everything. And I guess one thing that I wish I knew before this whole year started, before all this kind of work started, was that it was going to turn out okay. And that, um, you know, it's a lot of work and it's hard, but it's a temporary time. And, you know, once those interview offers start coming, it feels good. Awesome. Thanks. Do we have other questions? Oh, I think we have someone coming up. Uh, hello, um, my name is Ron Green. Um, I'm here as a grand parent of a freshman at Brown. And I'm actually here not to ask a question, but to pass out a little bit of advice. So I grew up in Providence, um, and my father's best friend was a radiologist. And so, he took, before HIPAA, he took me to the hospital, showed me x-rays on Saturday morning, and I just loved him, and went to medical school to become a radiologist. And uh, med, Brown did not have med school at the time, um, so I went to the University of Vermont, intending to be a radiologist, and um, I did not like my, I'm a psychiatrist, by the way, um, I did not like my psychiatry rotation in the 1960s, the department then was not great, it's fabulous now, so... No aspersions on UVM psychiatry. Um, but anyway, cut to the chase, um, all medical students had a sort of two years in the military following their rotating internship. So we all did four months of medicine and four months of surgery, which I did at Dartmouth at Mary Hitchcock. Uh, and I got into a radiology program at Montefiore in the Bronx. A week later, the Navy sent me a letter, and I was forced against my will to become a psychiatrist. I did not want to do psychiatry. And... Um, but I, I did this is a program where you could do your residency before you went in as a specialist, in this case, radiology. Well, to my huge surprise, I ended up loving psychiatry. I just, it was totally shocking. And so my advice is about keeping um, one's mind open to uh, all the different possibilities and uh, hope, hopefully you'll never be forced to do anything, but uh, that was my experience. So, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, hi, I have a question um, how your education here is going to help prepare you for some of the day-to-day -day practical stresses you're going to have as a physician, like maybe seeing seven patients an hour or dealing with what the insurance will pay for and just more um, practical issues that you'll have later on in your career. So one thing I really like about the first year curriculum is they get you into the hospital pretty quickly. And so I think that is where I've learned it most is um, with a doctoring mentor or if I'm shadowing for a, uh, they call it preclinical elective where you get to explore a specialty um, like outside of the, the Brown curriculum that everyone does, like all the med students do. And so 
I'd say primarily there while you're in the hospital, you get to really hear um, as they're like dealing with those issues, how they deal with those issues. And then in the curriculum, you're given cases uh, that deal with the outside, the science, the diagnosis, how do you be a physician? So um, I think that's been really cool and a nice like balance to the overall curriculum. So like ideally when I'm starting rotations, like these things won't surprise me. Yeah, I think I'll just add, we have a, a health system sciences curriculum here. So first year, uh, you have the basic sciences that you're taking, and then you also have kind of a more like public health type course that you take in conjunction with the basic sciences. And so you learn all about different aspects of the healthcare system. And so I, I think we're kind of prepared for um, some of those obstacles that we will inevitably face when we become physicians. And then in terms of your other question about, you know, just managing day-to-day -day stress, I think um, our med school schedule is pretty pretty busy here. And at this point, I'm sort of used to going from, <laughs> from one class to another class to this meeting to that meeting. And, um, you know, I think as, as you become kind of habituated to that, that sort of thing, for better or for worse, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not as stressed out about about being stressed. I think there's a, a phrase that people kind of um, toss around and that's that you you become comfortable with being uncomfortable. So there's a lot of information in med school and sometimes it feels like you're drinking from a fire hydrant, but um, you know, you kind of learn how to just cope with all that information and, and carve out time for yourself. So um, I'm sure we all do step outside of med school as well. Um, I like to, to run and and work out and um, go hiking and stuff like that. I think we have time for one last question. Hi, um, I'm Iris Mantle. I'm a cardiologist in New Jersey. Uh, my son is thinking about medical school now. And it was interesting to, to hear you talk about the research and the inpatient care that you do. But, you know, as, as I move along in my career, you know, irregardless of what specialty you go into, the outpatient arena has become much more dominant uh, than it used to be at the time that I went to medical school. So I was wondering, you know, what your experience is over the four years. Is it still very um, inpatient focused or are they really teaching you how to manage an outpatient clinic, which at times can be more challenging because, you know, patients have to be sent here and there for different tests and and, and procedures, and it's not all together in one place when you have a patient in the hospital. So I was wondering what your experiences are now. I feel like halfway through third year, I can kind of answer that question. I feel like Brown does a good job of implementing outpatient into all our rotations, first and second year, as they were talking, you're paired with a doctor and mentor. Um, Although I was on my surgery rotation, they pair us with a physician where we have to go to their clinic hours. And surgery, you know, you, you think you're gonna be in the OR all day, wearing your nice scrubs. But we also, we, they, they added that outpatient aspect because surgery outpatient is a lot different than what you would expect. Like you stated, you know, there are labs that we need to do, there's pre-operative things that we need to do, and adding that component into all of our rotation ha rotations have shown the importance of outpatient clinic. And just to add to that, there is a program specifically for folks who want to go into primary care and do more in the outpatient setting called PCPM here at Brown, um, and they do their third year, their clinical year, a little bit differently and that they have um, fewer weeks um, inpatient, but a lot more weeks in the outpatient setting. Um, and that is mostly geared toward um, folks interested in primary care. But a lot of those students go into different specialties as well outside yeah. of primary care. I mean, the reality is, regardless of what specialty you go into, the outpatient arena is becoming more and more broad. I mean, I manage people with chronic heart failure in the office. You know, so yeah, you, know, you have to know how to manage that. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. 
Um, so just to close, um, I am in my ninth and final year here at Brown, nearing the end of my education, but I'll take many of the lessons I've learned here with me throughout my career. Um, I've loved this place and I'll have a hard time saying goodbye, but I know the faculty, peers, my peers and my deans here have helped prepare me to be the best version of myself as a clinician and as a human being. Um, being a pre-med and being a medical student, as we talked about, are not easy things, but I'm glad that uh, I get to be here in a place that has supported and nurtured my growth. So let's give a round of applause to our panelists. Thank you guys for your questions and your attention during this panel. We hope you'll be staying for the next panel about the Student Support Network. Either way, we hope you enjoy the rest of Family Weekend. <laughs>